Hello and welcome everyone to this beautiful Monday morning here on Instagram Live. And uh, thank you for joining me today. I tell you, it's been a glorious weekend, wonderful weekend. Got a good re weekend of rest and relaxation, some R&R. &R. So if you're on here on the news feed, definitely let me know you're on here. I'd love to be able to say hello to you guys. And by the way, I was going to tell you, many of you might be actually watching this from maybe a pre-recorded point of view, whether it is YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Facebook, let's see, is there any, Zap It, you know, these other ones. So if you are, hey, if you're in the future watching us in the past, hey, welcome anyway, all right? So, but I'm glad you guys are on here today. And I'm going to give you guys a uh, sort of a peak, um, a peak view in a second of really seeing something that I'm getting ready to put out here in a minute, which we'll talk about it here shortly. But I'm not going to show you that quite yet. But I do want to talk to you guys about a little bit something today that I actually thought I was maybe finished with talking about or discussing. But something in me was like, you know, you need to talk about it again today because I felt like in my spirit that the Holy Spirit was telling me that money is a frequency. And I sat, here, I sat here and pondered on that and the fact of money is a frequency. And what I did is like God kept on showing me over and over again how the Bible says, the scripture says, money answers all things. And since the Bible says money answers all things, we have to sort of re-examine that. Now, in my course a while back, I put out uh, on School of Financial Perception and Mental Economics, I began to do a lot of research to understand from a actual, uh, just a natural uh, normal more normalcy of currency, but also I looked into the scientific aspect of money. Then I looked into the spiritual side of basically the, the power or the frequency and the currency of the kingdom of God and the flow out of the kingdom of God. So when you begin to... Um, to understand all these uh, understandings of that, then you begin to realize, you know, uh, what exactly is money. So I'm going to talk just shortly for today before I give you my inside scoop on the brand new one, brand new book about to be released, because this one just came out this month. But I want to take a couple of moments to talk about this one, uh, The Secret of Money Manifestation, because I made sure I put a lot of secrets in this book that would help people to understand things for those maybe who feel like they don't have money or those who maybe feel like feel as if they're, they've are they had dreams from God or a vision from God, a prophetic word from God, or maybe you just know that you know that you know inside of you, you're supposed to have money one day for a reason, maybe for ministerial purposes, right? And the reason why I say this to you, because not everyone, listen to me closely, not everyone has a drive for the things, uh, maybe not just of God, but for the things of just what we might have, right? So, for example, it doesn't mean one is lesser than or, or greater than a you know, lover of God. It just means there's an authenticity, we'll say authenticity frequency inside of each one of us that's pre-programmed us before the foundation of the world that God sort of impregnated us with when we came into this earth realm through our mother's womb, which basically means why do I go through, throughout my life always desiring... Um, this or this or this, you know what I mean? Why do I go through life desiring, you know, that this is happening or that's happening, you know? And yet for me, I'm always thinking about this or that. Let me give you guys a great example of something that just happened a second ago. And that is this, that sometimes you might feel maybe discouraged because you see something, you hear something, or, you know, maybe something is a blockage to you or, or an obstacle to you. Or maybe you're finding yourself looking at this, thinking to yourself, you know, uh, when I think of, you know, him or her or this position, or when I hear of that thing or this this thing, you know, it makes me sad. It makes me depressed. It makes me upset. Well, first of all, let me tell you this. You know, things or people or obstacles are not the issue. In other words, they're not the issue. The issue lies within ourselves. That God is trying to, uh, to get us to a, pl to a place of understanding more, of really realizing that is this maybe supposed to be where I need to be and maybe the enemy's throwing something at me or maybe my mind is throwing maybe a an obstacle at me that's trying to keep me from, from diving in further or pulling back. Are you with me? So see, not everything actually is part of the, um, is part of the, um, maybe the invite of your life, nor are things in your life always the exit of your life. Sometimes obstacles are there and placed there to make you maybe understand what's on the other side of that obstacle. So that's why a lot of people in life will find themselves constantly you know, like knocking at the door, you know, being a seeker of a certain thing, right? And so when that happens, what it means is as that's going on, that means you have to begin to realize that what if you're pre-programmed for success? What if you're pre-programmed for maybe to learn how to do this or this in your life? And maybe 
it's always been in you before the foundation of the world because of the fact that, you know, it's always driving you further. You know, people say, man, it drove them to madness. Well, the truth is gifts and God's, and uh, excuse me, the gifts and talents of God are without repentance, which means that it's going to drive you to a place where it, uh, the people might look at you and say, why are you always concerned about money? Why are you always concerned about, you know, uh, starting a business? Why are you always sort of, you're obsessed with, you know, one day wanting to do this or this or this? Because we are pre-programmed for that success in maybe that genre or the success of the area in which we're supposed to uh, dive into. I've always said this to people, that a lot of times God will place a scarecrow are, we, are you with me? In your life, not to keep you out of the things, or whether the scarecrow is of God or the enemy, doesn't matter. The scarecrow in the field is not to keep you out. It's actually to, to keep the selectiveness of those who understand, have, have an ear to hear and eye to see, those who understand what that scarecrow represents, where they can get into the field and, and dive into the grain of what it is they need, right? The grain is the wealth value or your gold in your life, right? So to a crow, that seed you know, is gold to them. And so the scarecrow is made to keep them out from eating the richness of the grain, right? So when we see that, we have to realize that what if that uh, that obstacle, that scarecrow is in your life because it's not because of like the devil's trying, I mean, God's trying to keep you out of it. What actually, if God is putting there to say, I need you to fight through the good fight with a good fight of faith. I need you to overcome your paradigm. And so sometimes that scarecrow might be your worst enemy or you think, or maybe the obstacle in your life that you think you'll never make it past, but yet you can. Or maybe it's something you're frightened of as a kid. Or maybe it's something, you know, for example, you know, if I was to say, for example, if I was coming here with a bunch of pictures of clowns, you know, um, there are people actually out there that are afraid of clowns. I mean, have a phobia about clowns. Now, for me, I'm going to understand that. I might be like, well, a clown, you know, how can a clown be scary? Unless you watch the movie It, okay? Then it's going to scare you. But the point is, when you see yourself... And you see these things where somebody might say, oh, that's stupid. That's just silly. You're afraid of clowns. What's wrong with you? But on the other hand, though, you know, you might be the person who's afraid, afraid of clowns. So for someone else, it might not be, you know, a problem for them. The Bible says to, uh, to uh, one, let's see, um, how's it phrased? Um, what sin to one is not a sin to another. Most people don't realize that. And it doesn't mean the scarecrow is, is a sin, but a lot of times it can become a sin because of fear. Because love casts out fear, right? And God has not given you a spirit of fear. So maybe that fear of the obstacle is not trying to hold you out of it. Maybe it's God saying to you, hey, you know what? You need to overcome the fear and the obstacle to where you can move into the destiny or the grain of the harvest that I have for you. And see, a lot of times people look at money and they say, oh, you know what the Bible says? No, it's the love of money is the root of all evil, not actually money itself. Money is not evil. When people, let me, get, get, let me give you guys a great example. Let's say, for example, if you're that minister or maybe you're that person who says, oh, there's something that triggers inside of me when I hear a minister, a man of God who should be talking about the Bible, and yet they're talking about money. So let me ask you this question, okay? So here's the key thing. First of all, money's not evil. Money, no, God knows money is the currency within the earth because God gave the money. He created the currency value, uh, creativeness, in the conscience of man from day one to begin to give a power of give and take to purchase things. The Bible talks about, you know, selling, trading, and, you know, uh, and, and purchasing. So you have to understand that God gave that part of the currency of that money within the earth. So for example, if it's a trigger for you, for a minister to say, oh, they're talking about money. Then let me ask you a question. How come it's not a trigger for you when you hear another Christian get in politics and talk about Trump or Biden? You with me? Some people, if you were to say to some people, you know, I don't care for Trump, some people would be like, oh my God, you've blessed me the kingdom. Or have they? Are you with me? Because Trump has nothing to do with the kingdom. Money has nothing to do with the kingdom. But yet, the kingdom is distributed between political people of all of both sides. Money, jobs, um, you know, clothes. I mean, whatever the case may be, money, God has, has in birth a frequency in each person to understand if something's a trigger for you, maybe you need to be healed from the trigger. Because the truth is, money is not a sin. Money actually is the currency in which God has lowered into the earth, and he gave to man, and man created it by, as co-creators to begin to cause it to buy, sell, and trade, and be able to use it to where other people can prosper, and they can prosper. So see, triggers shouldn't affect you.
Because if, if money if money affects you and yet Trump and Biden, uh, you know, does, I mean, excuse me, if money affects you and Trump and Biden does affect you, or if money's a trigger and they're not, then guess what? You're not seeking the kingdom of God first. Because the truth is, even though the election's over, I'm just saying though as, 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 a, uh, as a way of triggers from a lot, of, a lot of people. Some people get triggered really bad if they say, you know, they love Biden, they hate Trump, they love Trump, they hate Biden. I mean, because anything of that, of that nature of the earth in a systematic way of living, Living should not trigger you, period, because God uses and can use anything. God can, I've always said this before, God can use a donkey, God can use anyone. And so guess what? If God can do that, that means, guess what? God can use the very thing of money in the earth, you know, because of the fact that it is a currency in which he has established in the earth. And so let me give you God, God is, God is a great example. If we read the scripture where it says God, you know, raises up kings and brings them down, okay, and, and we all say, hey, no big deal, God raised up Biden, you know, uh, Obama, Brute Bush, Trump, Biden, whatever, then we understand the logistics of the kingdom because God has obviously got his hand embedded within it, right, for a reason that maybe we can't see. So is it with money. So we could say God raises up people who have money. And God brings down people who have money. You might say, well, how is that possible? Because the fact God raises people up who understand how understand the frequency of money and knows exactly how to utilize it to populate the kingdom of God and to prosper the kingdom of God and to prosper ourselves and other people. All right. So how does God? And so if so, let's say for example, if the Scripture says God raises up people with money and God brings down people with money, how can we apply that? God raises up people who loves the Word, but God can bring down people who idolize. Are you with me? Idolize maybe their word as far as prophecy. I mean, you can use it for anything. What 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 we're saying is this: is God raises up people and things, and He can He can He can institute a, an instant. I gotta say this. He can institutionalize or institute, okay, a um, a path within money or presidents or governments or jobs or clothing or uh, anything in creation, no matter what it is. So what, when when God brings it down, He brings it down because people begin to embed their love and their obsession through the love to anything that moves. So let me give you guys a great example. If God raises up Trumps and Bidens and brings them down, that means we are called to, let's say, for example, vote. Voting according to what we feel in our spirit is what we feel, right? Not not being childish and ridiculous by making one party God and if you're not a Christian, the other one's not. I mean, that's just ridiculous and, and, and you know, whatever. So what do we say? We're saying God raises up kings and God brings them down. What, what, make, what makes it wrong for us is not to, hey, you know what? I like this dude. I'm going to vote for him. Or, hey, I want to, you know, vote for this person because I've always been this kind of person in a, in a party. Or I or, or this more of a value in my life is is more than this value. And then someone on the flip side of the different party could feel the same exact way. Doesn't mean both of them are right or both of them is wrong. It just is a matter of opinion. Doesn't I mean one's unrenewed and the other one's not. That's that's not, not not nice and fair to say. So let's say, for example, but if someone gets their, their heart involved in it to the place where it overrides them searching the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then guess what God will do? God will bring down that kingdom of obstacles of your political party in your brain or, or political way, a systematic way of thinking. Why? Because you've idolized it too much and you become a, you have you put a love with it. So you see what I'm saying? So so the verse is letting you know that no matter what your where your heart is within anything in love life, it becomes an idol to you. No matter how obsessed you become with it, it's becoming an idol to you. But now if you see from afar, from a distance, and recognize the, the, the attributes of both parties, for example, in a political arena, and you say, eh, I just tend to vote Republican. Eh, I tend to, tend to vote a Democrat because of reasons, or that, those reasons. Then we have to learn to respect people. And then guess what? It has to become a love for you or an obstacle for you, so therefore God will, doesn't have to remove it from you, right? Same with money. Same with a job. Some people idolize their job so much where they're obsessed and they have the love of their job becomes the root of all evil for them. How do we know that? Because they're, they've allowed themselves to create into the systematic way of living within the world to override. How would you know you have a love for your job when you take up your time and I time when you're spending time when you should be spending time with your kids and wife and you're doing a overload of what you what you call an overflow of your work? Are you with me? Or maybe something to the effect of I can't do this, I can't take this trip, I got to work. You know, hey, go to the kids softball game, I can't, I got to work. Are you with me? So it becomes an obsessive love for you. So God can raise, God will raise up that job, but God will also bring down that job. God brings down things when you. Begin Begin to bring the imagination into it of idolization. Anything you idolize becomes an idol for you. 
So I always tell people, if you're obsessed with politics, it's an idol for you, and God doesn't like that. He's against it. I don't care how much you, let's say, for example, let's say, for example, and this is a good example. Let's say if people say, oh my God, well, Trump was sent by God, or whatever, or Biden was sent by God. Well, it doesn't matter. If you become obsessed with the love of that, of that person, all right, or, or that party, then guess what? God will bring it down of what he wants raised up in your life. God doesn't like anything or anyone to be loved. Are you with me? Not anyone, sorry. He wants everyone to be loved. God doesn't love anything to be loved over uh, the kingdom of God and the righteousness of God. Because once you seek that kingdom, the protocol way, that all these things will be added to you. So there's a frequency of money here that God is saying, hey, you know what? It's a kingdom frequency because I created money to flow in this system. When you start loving it is when it becomes wrong. But I never said you couldn't befriend it. God wants you to befriend money in the sense of understanding the logistics of how money works. And if your mind, for example, the scripture says this. The scripture says, um, it says, let's see, let him who steal, steal no more, that he may work with his own hands that he may give. Let me say it again. Let him who, let him who stole, steal no more, um, uh, basically making money that he will begin to give it away. That's basically what it's saying. He, let him, him steal, steal no more, that he would work it with his own hands. Why? So he may give. Here we go. I think I paused for me for a minute. So the moment you begin to understand the frequency of, of, of heaven flowing within money, because the Bible says money answers all things. So what it's saying is money answers all things naturally, while maybe grace, under, uh, grace uh, and, answers things that are, that are, say, spiritually. Are you with me? And joy might, uh, might uh, be the key or the frequency of the soul that brings out the answering of situations you may go through. Why? Because if I'm sad, I need to be joyful. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So the joy of the Lord, the frequency of joy in my working in my soul actually begins to help me to realize that's the prosperous way for me that overrides my sorrow. Or my depression. Are you with me? So there is a heavenly frequency that flows into the systematic way of life, of buying, selling, and trading, of your soul, of your emotions, and also uh, the same way as for spiritual. All right? So with that being said, you got to know what frequency God is utilizing to begin to populate your life, but also begin to reproduce within your life to have an abundant flow within the natural, the spiritual, and the soulish realm. Are you with me? So you have to tap into that. So I really want to encourage everyone to go right now. And, and once again, this book, this is going to be the last time, that last week we're advertising this as far as on our, on our live. And I'll tell you why the secret here in a minute. So do that today if you get a chance and order this or download it today. You need to be set free, period. And when I talk to people that, that are, are suffering financially during COVID and they say, I don't want to do, I don't want to do, you know, because, you know, I need more money. And I always say, you don't wait to your time of panic and, and call upon the name of the Lord. I mean, he, he's going to save you. But I'm saying, though, you can't expect to, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're riding high and all of a sudden you, you go low and expect for God to bail you out every time. When God is saying, hey, you had all these chances, all these times in the past to hang around people who were successful, hang around those entrepreneurs, hang around people who knew how to flip their money, make their money, and populate it and, and, and begin to produce it. You know, so sometimes it might be too late for you. And so I always say, you know, you don't, you don't read things when you're riding low, and you can, you should. I'm saying, though, you need to do it while you're, while you're riding high to where you're actually understanding how to distribute and populate and prosper your money to work for you, not against you. I was telling a friend of mine, the other day, I said, most people in their life will never, ever, ever, ever understand the power of, of, um, of actually gaining interest. There are people, and some of you might be, might be those people, there are people who the rest of their lives will always be paying interest for their home, their, their home mortgages, their car loans, their credit card bills. Good Lord in heaven. How many of you are suffering from your credit card bills and you're paying interest every month to them while you're paying the minimum or a little bit more you know, on your thing, but you never get paid off? Guess what? Some of you, unfortunately, some people in the earth, will say some people, will actually die in their life always giving money and interest to other people. When the, when the truth is, I cut that off 20 years ago. Let's see. Let me think. Yeah, yeah, 19, 20, yeah. Well, 18, 18, 19 years ago, 19 years ago I, from that day, I decided I would never pay a penny of interest ever in my entire, entire life again. I never have. I haven't paid one penny. It's been zero, zero on interest of, of a credit card because I have excellent, like I actually have, believe it or not, I actually have like, the, I'm a perfect, perfect, perfect um, uh, credit score more than most people can ever achieve. And getting and getting actually like two points off from perfection is extremely good and high. Are you with me? So it, so like, for example, my credit score is 848. 
instead of 850. That's like the highest you can anyone can ever get because no one can actually hit 850. But my point being is I went from, let's say, 750 20 years ago to an 8, you know, 848. Because a good name is you chose among riches, and that one good name actually flows in the frequency of excellence. Your good name that is chosen among riches means your good name is flowing in the frequency of integrity and excellence, which then will connect with the frequency of prosperity because the, the two scriptures work together. And that is a good name is to be chosen among riches, which means God saying, it's not the fact I'm saying I want you to have a good name and no riches. It's saying once you do the protocol of the kingdom by getting the good name, then the riches follow underneath that because the riches have a master to, un, to answer to. Because money is, is not a master. Money is a servant that answers all things according to the Bible. So money is a servant that must have a master to answer to. And the master it's looking for to answer to is a good name as he chose him in riches, which is the idea. Are you with me? So it works for the integrity of your identity. Everything in the kingdom is protocol. Everything is. So that means when it says uh, money answers all things, which means money answers all things, you have to be very careful what it's answering in your life. Are you with me? Is it answering to the master of the co-creator who you are because you understand your Lord over the prosperity, are you with me, to begin to navigate through the things? Seek your first kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. When things are added to you, it's things are added in your life to find a master it can, it can, it can basically serve. And you're the master or the Lord or the co-creator within the system of this world that is wanting or needing to find the servants to work for it, which the servants are money. And when you allow money to become your master or Lord over your own create co-creativeness, guess what? Then you fall and it falls. Why? Because money is never called to, to, to lead. It's called to serve. And it's looking for people who know who they are and their identity to begin to do. And let me explain this to, to you as well. Money is not looking for somebody who can just talk the talk. It's looking for somebody who can walk the walk and get into the frequency of financial um, uh, population of beginning to produce more of itself. Think about this way. How many friends of yours are you friends with because you understand that they, they reproduce after their own kind? They reproduce out of their own integrity. Therefore, they attract into their life. Guess what? Good-hearted people who are full of integrity. So if you get in front of a person who, who has a spirit of entrepreneurship and they know exactly how to begin to navigate and begin to leverage their money and leverage maybe the laws of God in the New Testament, leverage their grace of God, leverage their love of God for all people, and they know how to leverage things out, then you want to be friends with them, right? And they will attract more people who are awakening to that same vein of understanding how to reproduce after its own kind. Are you with me? That's why it's important for you to not hang around people who are, who, and, and, and trust me, let me tell you this also. There is no one on planet Earth who's a loser. No one. People, you, people might say, oh, what about the Hindus not, wor not worshiping God? Oh, Lord. Well, I was about to say, well, guess what? They're not a loser. No one on this planet's a loser. Everyone has the capability and the power in them to, to cr co create to be rich or to make money or to live poor or to have a good job or not a good job. Everybody has the same thing in them. Because Jesus said, Jesus is the light that lighteth every man. Every man. So there's a light inside of every man. What they do with the light is their business. Whether they produce more for the master of the kingdom of God or they produce none because they haven't awakened to the light in them that Christ has died to give them that power of knowing what they can populate in the earth today or who they are within him, right? So, bottom line is this. God is looking for people who know how to tap into their identity, know how to tap into the frequencies of the earth of prosperity and, reprodu re and reproducing after its own kind. And, and for those who have an ear to hear and eye to see can tap into that frequency, that everything in their life will prosper even as they're so, they're so prosperous because they know how to, how to get into the place of reproduction. They know how to get into the place of populating. They know how to get into the place of expansion. And if you they don't, they'll never make it. So when I say some people will die, always paying money and in interest to the, to the system of this world, then guess what? They're, they might die a champion, but they're not dying more than a champion or more than a conqueror. No matter how much you name and claim it, grab it and blab it, or say you're a Christian, or speak in tongues, or oh, hundo shundo, or fall on the floor and shake, that's not, that doesn't impress me one bit. I have no people who would go, oh, Jeremy, how, oh, hallelujah. And I'm like, that doesn't impress me one bit. When I look at the style of your living, that impresses me. 
Because the Bible says you shall know them by their fruits. It never says you will know them by their hooplas and their woo to you know, I'm sorry, I'm not making fun of that. I'm just saying, you know, the Bible says that's not what you look after. And some of you go by what you go by what you see and not and, and not and, and feel instead of the power of understanding the economic system of the kingdom of God, the strategy of the, of the protocol of God, and that's why you never prosper in the earth. And that's why I'm that, and check this out. You ready? I'm gonna say something really true. Brittany, you're on here. Help me out here. I don't know if Eddie's on here today, but hopefully he is. Here's the key thing. Because you're, you've never been called to go by what you see or feel. And people who don't understand their identity and they're afraid or they're ashamed because of the fact they don't prosper, and they're afraid and they're ashamed because they don't know how to reproduce after its own kind, those are the people who dive further into the emotion of what they see and feel. That's why you have a lot of people in church who who go, you know, who constantly, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost, you know, because of the symptom. not making fun of that by far because it's, it's God. I'm saying, though, most people dive into that because they have nothing else to dive into. And so they'd rather get hyped up spiritually than they would hyped up into the co-creativeness of who they are and hyped up into the sonship and who they are versus the very nature of things that people can see and go by and feel. And they'd rather go that, that realm because they know in this world they're not making it. Because in this, in this, in your sphere of influence, it's not prospering, period. Body, soul, or spirit. And they have nothing here of a leadership champion mentality. So they'll, so they'll go over here to the feel, to the feel good realm and to the emotional and what, and go both this here feel because they know that if they can, I can feel it, maybe it's real for me. If other people can see me shaking and quaking and oh, no, 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 and, and fall on the floor, then guess what happens? Well, once again, we're not making fun of that. We're being realistic. If people can see that, then maybe they will look at them as a leader or, wow, you're so spiritual. And the key thing is, to be very blunt with you, they have no discernment. No one, neither one, neither one of those parties are speaking of discernment. If these people had discernment, they'd understand where these people are coming from. And understand where they're where they're hyping things up or to compensate for the things in their life that they know they don't have a championship mentality on in the system of this world. So they don't know how to utilize the kingdom populating with through and within them to prosper the system of their sphere of influence to up it. And so therefore they'll never be able to walk in true leadership role. And they know that. And so they get into the emotional realm. Come on, guys. So I need some uh, some of you to me some hearts and lights as you know what I'm saying is real and true. That's why they go by what you, they see or feel. It's interesting how the scripture says, do not go by what you see or feel, but yet uh, the majority of charismatics go by what they see or feel. If I can see gold manifest, if I can feel the Holy Ghost, and yet what you're doing is you're doing an anti, it doesn't mean we can't, we can't it doesn't mean we're not going to feel the Holy Spirit. We can. It doesn't mean we're not going to sense the power of the Holy Spirit on us. We will. What I'm saying though is, if you get carried away in that, then you're becoming an antichrist mentality because you're going against the very nature of the very thing that Jesus said not to go by. All right? Because when you move out, let me tell you this, when you move out of what you're seeing and feeling and you move out of that realm, then you move into the realm of all things are possible for those that believe in me on this side. And through that realm, you begin to understand how to begin to hang out with people who are more than conquerors and more than and champions to where they don't have to go by with a seer feel. They know they're prospering. They know their soul is in control and not falling to pieces. They know their economic status will never break no matter if depression comes uh, like the roaring 20s or whatever. They understand because they understand the power of how to make the, the, the how to tap into the frequency of the money situation, body, soul, or spirit, and therefore they know how to regenerate and repopulate and expand in everything they do in their life. Are you with me? So either you live on this side of more than a conqueror to where you can influence the system. Let me, let me tell you guys something. I want you to hear me out for a moment, all right? Here's, here's what I'm trying to tell you. There are two rims we live in, one in the natural, one in the supernatural. The supernatural is made to not live in and stay there. It's made to get into the supernatural, understand the value and the frequency of the supernatural to where you know how to get into the frequency of the supernatural and let it flow in and through you as a distribution center to populate and to raise the, the kingdom of, of, of this world into the value of the system of the kingdom of our God, right? I love the quote. And, and once again, I love, you know, Michelle Obama said something very cool. And she says, when they go low, we go high. Think about the spiritual principle. Think about that principle, how spiritual it is. And once again, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm for or against anybody. I don't care about the kind of stuff. I, I'm over the childishness of all that. I'm saying, notice what, it, what was said. And that is when, when, when they go low, we go high. And what that means is this. When the world system... 
from a prophetic point of view, when the world system goes low, because the, because the system of this world lives in a low range, it can never go higher. The, the system of the value of the system of this world was never made to go from glory to glory. It can't go higher. It's made only for the system of this world. Just like gravity. Gravity does not leave planet Earth. All right, it does. Gravity is not in the clouds or in the heavens, I should say. And what that means is this, because gravity understands the protocol of how to serve the Earth by by utilizing and shielding the Earth with its gravitational pull and power of the of that law of gravi 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 gravity. Why? So the people in this world can live, the plants can live. So the power of gravity is holding the world together by the law and the standard under the protocol of God who initiated it to flow this way. If the law of gravity ever gets out of proportion and disobeys and begins to leave planet Earth, we all die. We all start floating up and everything floats up and everything dies. My video was pausing. So with that said, there's two types of people. Those who understand the supernatural, that they don't go, oh, prayer, you know, oh, God, I'm so spiritual. I'm so spiritual. Oh, my God, you know. And for people to look at them and say, oh, man, the glory of God's all over you. And guess what? They can't pay their bills. They can't bring the kingdom into the value system of this world. They don't know how to populate, you know, anything natural. Not we're talking, Let's just set money aside. They don't know how to populate anything. And once again, we're not making fun because these are our brothers and sisters in Christ. What we're saying is this, is all of this, all of this was created for us to know its place and its protocol and the systematic way of how the world moves and operates to where we can influence and, and get into bed within ourselves the, the leveraging of the kingdom of God in us to populate it into our metron, our sphere of influence, to begin to raise the system and redefine it into the systematic way of the kingdom now. Because the kingdoms of this world, as, as Revelation says, well, guess what? We'll be the kingdoms of our Lord and Christ. And that's what we're doing right now. And so that's what I'm saying. Don't go to don't don't go by, by, by people who are still and don't get me wrong, I'm saying this. I'm saying, how can I say this in a in a, in a nice way? Um, because I love everyone and whatever. But what can you do? When you see people, you look at their style of living, their lifestyle. I always say this, you know, when people say, oh, those people are gay. They're in a homosexual lifestyle. You're in a lifestyle. We're all in a lifestyle. I mean, if you would, if you didn't have a style of living, you'd be dead. Hello, dingbat. <laughs> so, you know, I'm sorry. Pamela's going to be like, oh, there he goes again. Name gone. I just say things for a joke. But my saying is, guess what? I'm, I live a lifestyle. You live a lifestyle. The style of our living is, under, is understandable and powerful because of the fact that the, our, our style of living is there to begin to understand how we influence it through the style or the perceptiveness of how we see things and what angle by which we're seeing it from the kingdom point of view or the earth point of view and knowing how to begin to incorporate that from a protocol way to raise and redefine our sphere of influence or, or the system in where, where we live in. Remember, we live in the world, not out of it. And how to begin to raise that up. Are you with me? Because if not, the enemy will keep you low into the system because it's redefined to never go up. Are you with me? So with that being said, you've got to begin to understand and realize and know the frequency of all things in this earth. So in my book, I talk about the power of money manifestation, the secret of it, to begin to let you understand and know exactly that everything has a vibration. Everything has a frequency. Everything has a, has a, a way in which it lives or it thinks or it breathes. Everything. Money thinks. Uh, everything in your life thinks. And when you tap into the power of how things think, then you get to know it to know how it's thinking and how you can begin to befriend it, whether it's your job, your finances, um, your wife, your husband, your children. You know, I have no relations with my wife, man. We don't, we don't even sleep in the same bedroom, you know, whatever. I don't have relations with my husband, blah, blah, blah. You know, what, what we're saying is this, because you've lost the frequency of the oneness of covenant with your, with your spouse, which means you're not vibrating the same frequency, which means... Guess what? You'll, you'll cut off the communication. Vibration and frequency has a communication. If my hand is a vibration coming into the world, vibrating a certain, let's say, heartbeat to know how to know the frequency of how money works, how to know how my relationship with my wife or husband works, how to know how my relationship through loving my neighbor works, how to, how to, how to learn to love my... Sorry, it was paused again for, for uh, I guess, uh, the... Um yeah, the frequency, right? And so if you don't understand that and know the, the, the heartbeat of the, of the frequency of all things, then you'll never be able to understand the communication of that. That's why people suffer in their marriage, because they've lost communication. 
or there's there's no common ground. You got to find a common ground with money, your job, your success, your career, your ministry, your prophetic gifting. You got to find the common ground to everything that is existing in you and you're wanting to exist outside of you. That's the that's the power of understanding that everything in the universe is has a frequency that's waiting on your communication to connect with it and commune with it to know how it works and know how you are supposed to connect with all frequencies to be the Lord over that thing. People might say, well, Jeremy, I don't understand the whole lordship thing you're mentioning. Let me explain this to you. There's a scripture that was given, I think it's one of the parables, but it's in the New Testament that deals with, I'll have to find it for you guys later, um, that deals, and, and if, if my team is on here, if you can look it up really quick and put the scriptures, that would be amazing. All right, that'd be great for me if you could. But but this is what it says. It deals with that though you be a, um, you know, basically saying that though you be a child, okay? In other words, though you be a child and yet you're born into a rich home, you will never know it's your Lord over the servants of that house. Why? Because you're so young. And being so young means if you have a, a nanny or, 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 or um, a butler or a, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, a, how, a, 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 you know, a house cleaner, maid, whatever, or you have anything. Or people who work for, let's say, your mom and dad who, let's say, might have money, right? So what the verse is saying, the story is saying is, if you're a child, you don't know the power of what you have over the, the maid or over the servant or the nanny or the butler or the whatever, whoever's been hired. I don't like the word nanny. I'm just saying, though, no matter what this person is, maybe your parents are so rich, maybe let's say, for example, that they both work and they need someone to hire to come in to be like a nanny to, you know, watch over my child throughout the day to where they don't feel alone since they're homeschooled or whatever the case may be. So the scripture deals with this, that this child has so much of power and authority, it does understand its own ability that even when the maid walks in the room or the servant or the cleaner or the butler or whatever, that it has lower or power over that person because it doesn't understand the power of that. So it realizes that, to me, I'm a child. The long, as long as I think like a child, though I be Lord of all, that's what the Bible says, which means, but once I, once I grow up into maturity to be, to be an adult, I realize, you know what? I have authority over the nanny, the maid, the servants, the butlers, the whatever. That's what the scripture's talking about. So it says that even though you have submitted to the powers that actually you're Lord over, that you didn't even realize that. You didn't understand the fact that you are Lord of all over these people. Are you with me? And so what that mean what that means is your consciousness has to grow into the fullness of the maturity to realize wait a minute. This whole time, let's say for example, let's say as your let's say if you're a child and you're 6 years old and let's say your parent let's say you're rich you're rich. Most, your young people wouldn't know who rich you rich was. Love rich you're rich. You know, one day when I was a kid I used to think I'm going to be rich rich one day. And guess what? Well, I'm not suffering. Let's put it that way. My point being is when you think of rich you rich, you think of he had all this money and you know, and yet what's funny is when you think of a rich child, they don't know the fact that if they have a nanny or a maid or a house cleaner or whatever, that say treats them bad when mom dad's not looking and they treat them bad, the child's not going to know, "Hey, wait a minute. Hold on. I have just as much authority as my mom and dad." Because I'm Lord over the, over this palace, over this castle, over this house, or over you. And so you can't treat me this way. You're fired. But a child doesn't respond that way. It doesn't understand its power and its authority. So the scripture talks about, so the child is going to put up with it, thinking, well, I'm a child. Maybe I deserve it. Or, well, they're mean, but I can't say anything. Or maybe they run to mom and dad down the road and say, hey, she's been treating me bad, or he's been treating me bad for all these years. And mom and dad's like, well, let me take care of that. They're fired. So the child doesn't realize his power and authority. But and the and the scripture literally says this. The scripture says, though he be Lord of all, even though the child is Lord of all over his own influence or his own uh, you know um, property or his own money, guess what? So he never understands the power of authority. So he doesn't realize because the child doesn't think like an adult. That's why we should have childlike faith because a child will do whatever it takes to be a daredevil and we grow up, we're not that way. Well, I'm too sophisticated to do that anymore, brother or sister, you know? So you see what I'm saying? So what happens is the scripture literally says that that, that child is no different than the servant because of the fact that he does understand his power of authority, so he differs not from the servant, the Bible says. That's exactly what it's quoted. That the child differs not from the servant because he doesn't realize, though he be Lord of all. And so the scripture is telling you that you are Lord of all. It's, it's like you are Lord over your life. So, so the, our Heavenly Father is put here 
or but uh, our heavenly Father's over us to show us your Lord of all of the all of your own sphere of influence, of your money, your job, your career, your children, your your wife, your husband. You are Lord of these things, not in a lording way like I'm going to tell you what to do, but in a lording way of great authority, but also great love and great dis distribution of knowing the power of your leveraging and knowing the power of your balance. And yet, most people don't realize that. So. In my book, I sort of talk a little bit about the secrets of money manifestation that deals with the idea that you've got to know who you are. Because if you're going, if you're going, if you die paying interest to the world, then you then you have defeated the purpose of you being the Lord. You've defeated and you never mastered your position of co-creatorship. You have defeated and never mastered your position as being a sonship. I'm gonna give you guys a great example. You ready? Now this is gonna be a bit, be a little political, but it's really cool. I actually put it on Instagram the other day, and I'm gonna write a, I'm gonna write a long thing on this, uh, not too longer from now. You know how I mentioned the other day we won't get into the deep side of politics, but to give you a great example. So let's say you have two systems: Republican Party, Republican Democrat, and they're gonna feed off one another. You don't think they do? They're gonna feed off one another, all right? And so let's say for example you get them, and they're like, "Hey, we know our power." You know, as a Republicans or Democrats, we know our power over people. So what do we do? We're gonna we're gonna elect maybe a, a you know a, rep, a leader who's gonna represent the Repu Republican Party. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a leader who's gonna represent the Democrat Party. And so they find people that are maybe maybe very charismatic or maybe people would go after. They look into the whole statistics to find the person that can be representing their parties. Right? Why? Because they want to be able to pick the best candidate they feel would help with finances or uh, white people, black people, or rich people, poor people, or the church, or the heathen, whatever the case may be. So each party, you know, they're not dumb. They choose that. And so through that, through the, repre through the representation, they begin to un then all of a sudden begin to truly begin to brainwash every one of us. Let me tell you something. If you think that, that Bush uh, and, uh, and, and Obama and Biden and Trump are not trying to brainwash you, folks, then come out from among them and be separate because they are. Everybody is programming you. Everybody is. The internet, I, the, one of my favorite shows, well, my favorite shows, one of the scariest things I've watched on Netflix, for example, is called The Social Dilemma. If you guys watched it, you would it would blow your mind. And basically, this is dealing with money and the frequency because when you watch The Social Dilemma on Netflix, it's really powerful. It, it's, it lets you know that YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Google, Yahoo, Every one of them, every, and, and let me tell you something. There's, uh, well, I can't, I can't, I don't want to say it because it's a Christian one, but there's a new one that starts with an X, and it's, and it's basically um, owned by Christians. But my point being is, is there, it's just like the other ones in the sense of all of them are programmed to know how the, how the, um, the, um, Archety no, I'm sorry, what is it? The uh, uh, algorithms are, are set into motion. So it draws more people. Let's say, for example, if you're more of a conspiracy theories and, oh my God, the Democrats take it over the world. They're going to make us, you know, uh, you know, socialists and communists, which is so, so ridiculously idiotic. But, you know, it, it's going to feed into you. It's going to feed more into that. If you think, for example, oh my God, Trump's here to ruin the world. Oh my God, he's antichrist. Guess what? You'll get more of that. And social media. Social media and, and the Google, it's all programmed to whatever you look at the longest of your time, it gets into that frequency to feed more of that into you. So if you're a flat earther, guess what you're going to get? The whole system of the internet world will actually sort of work together in a way to make sure that when you Google, even on other sides of the planet, or let's say if one's in California, one's in Alabama, and whatever you Google, it will actually pull up the what you're Googling that's popular in that area, not even international. And that's why people, for example, this is a great example. That's why a lot of people will say, for example, they'll say, you know, um, there's more Republicans out there than Democrats. And Democrats will say there's more Democrats than Republicans because it's all over the it's all over, you know, my internet. Well, duh, because the internet world knows how to get the algorithms to flow with exactly what you want and what you're looking for to where it makes you think that, that what you think or what you're thinking is the most popular consensus of the planet. Come on. And so we're not saying the internet is the, the internet antichrist because thank God for the internet. Okay, sorry, pause again. You cannot trust, you know, Fox, CNN, MSN, Trump, Biden. You can't trust any of them because they're all doing the same thing that you think they're not doing. And that is, there's an algorithm within those people that actually still know how to populate in the internet world to generate what it is you want to hear. And so for me, I'm not a conspiracy theorist person. I'm not a whatever because I'm like, whatever, folks. I mean, you know, I, I see these people and I'm like, oh, you're showing your ignorance. Please don't say you got discernment from God to make, the, to make all of us Christians look so ridiculous because you're not using it. Amen. And so, so in other words, what are we saying to get back to my book? Everything has a frequency. Everything has a frequency. The internet, 
social media, all of that frequencies that want to, to, find, to try to find your own way of paradigms and how you think in your brain, and it flows with how you think according to what you've seen, how long you've looked at it, according to YouTube as far as if you kept on watching the video that comes after that, that they re re recommend, video after that, video after that. It all gets you into a way of understanding how to, how to, how to program and reprogram you to line up with it, and how it, how it does it is it wants to know how you're programmed and then it can reprogram reprogram you by flowing into that synchronicity of your mind that's programmed that way. And then once it once the two become one, then their systems, uh, uh, you know, in their net world of their algorithms, understand how to flow with that of what you want to see, what you feel like you need to see, what's really important to you, not to the earth. Are you with me? Think about it. People are going to see things bad about Trump. Because, because they believe that way, and the algorithms of the, of the internet world will, will send more of that to them. People who think Biden's of the devil, guess what? They'll send more of the same algorithms to Republicans, and yet some Republicans are thinking, oh, I'm using discernment from, from the Lord. He's sending me to see this video, brother. And I want you to say, no, he's not. Actually, believe it or not, you're in the system of the frequency of the algorithms, so come out from among them, be separate. You see what I'm saying? And so both sides don't realize... Satan, sinner alike, we're all being programmed by the system. No, that's not to start anything. I'm just saying, though, if you if you if you awaken out of the matrix of understanding that, then you realize how social media might can possibly work for you, and maybe how you can leverage and navigate through that to be more open minded and realize my way is not always the right way. My way is not the only. Maybe my way might be the wrong way, because I keep on getting more of this to me. Oh my God! This thank you, Lord. Algorithms. Algorithms and how and how the flow of social media and everything works works the exact same way of law of attraction. Think about that. The exact same way of law of attraction. And that is what you think you attract more into your life. How you think, you draw more of that same type of thinking into your world. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So guess what happens? You have to begin to realize that guess what? That and this is so so wild. Social media, Twitter, Yahoo, Facebook, Instagram, you know, uh, Google, all these people. They actually work every day to, to create their own attractiveness of the laws of their own social media to begin to cause you to attract more of what you're thinking. So when people say to me, oh, that law of attraction, that's not biblical, brother. And I want to say, actually, it's more biblical than anything. Because as how you think is what you attract into your world and you become that thing. And when people say, I don't believe I attract in my world according to what I think, then guess what? then you need to throw, to throw your phone and computer away because guess what? You're living in the world of attractiveness, law of attraction. You're living in it through social media and they are the gods of the law of that internet law of attraction attracting to you exactly what you're thinking because they know exactly what, what you're feeding into. They're going to feed you more into that. Are you with me? So guess what? Bible's always been right the whole time. We do attract into our lives everything and yet... The internet world understands that principle, so it dives into that to pro reprogram you once it knows your programming. Are you with me? That's why we're during the day we're like we're all like, who sent me an email? You know, we set our phones down. Ding! Oh, hold on. Oh, oh, she liked my picture on Instagram. Oh my goodness! And then we, we then we, then we look into that freak. We get into the frequency of who likes me, who doesn't like me. Why didn't you like my post? Why didn't you comment on my post? We get into the frequency of exactly what they want. It's a frequency of being reprogrammed. So, guess what? Money works the exact same way. There's frequencies in this universe, folks, that God is saying you can connect into the kingdom frequency and through the kingdom frequency of seeking the kingdom of God he'll, and his righteousness, then it'll begin to flow into everything you, you know and, 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 it'll begin to, and you'll begin to make it work. How many is with you, with me? So, through that, you have to understand that. So, I'm going to encourage you right now. If you truly, 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 truly want to prosper, and you want to understand more about frequency, the frequency world of financial abundance to where you can finally start getting interest. I actually get interest now from my mutual mutual uh, uh, funds, you know, my, um, my, uh, my mutual savings. I, 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 I interest, I, interest now is paid to me. I don't pay any, any interest anymore from my house or my credit card. Not a penny. I actually get interest back. Now, I reap the benefits with my Amazon Prime card and my American Express, I reap the benefits of these by never giving them one penny the entire year at all, and yet I reap the benefits of more mileage on my on my on my on my uh, Delta plan and for my my uh, Amazon Prime 
credit card. Uh, I even get points of that to gain. I get at least $145 a month. Every single month, I get about $145 a month on my Amazon to use because I use my Amazon Prime card. See, here's the key thing. So uh, by the end of the year, I've actually, this is no lie. In fact, I wish I could calculate my, but my phone's in here. I don't know if someone's on here. Uh, uh, maybe my uh, uh, my team guy's on here. So uh, as an accountant. So whatever, let's say if you do, let's say 130. Do 130 times 12. That's going to be what? Uh, over 1,000. I'm sorry, yeah. Is that right? 100, yeah. So it'd be what, 1,000, two or 300, something like that. Is that right? So let's see. Let me do it again. 130 times 12. Whatever that is, whoever whoever's on here, let me know. So 130 times 12 is literally how much I have at the end of the year built up on my, in my Amazon by using my Prime card that I never pay a penny for in my life. It's free money. It's free money. So I'm getting at least $1,200 every year to buy free stuff from Amazon, and this not cost me one pretty penny, not one cent, because I don't pay a cent or penny for my, for my two credit cards. I want to encourage, okay, yes, thank you, Pamela, 1560 Wow, that's more than I thought. So that's how you work the system, and you get interest back into you without you paying the penny of interest. Are you with me? That's why it's important. So I want to teach you about money. I want you to understand, I always say this to people, if someone hasn't if someone's not successful within whatever it is that genre they're in, you know, bless them, give them grace, encourage them, but sli silently just sort of walk away, and you can be friends with them, but walk away while they're still struggling too. Get into the leadership of those who already are the head and not the tail, no matter what it is. If it's on grace and love, if someone has mastered the realm of grace, not that we can all master love, which we would need to, but if somebody's mastered grace to just give grace to everyone on planet Earth, if people have mastered the power of love to know, look, I don't care if you come to me and spit in my face, you murder my children, you slit my dog's throat, that sounds really gory, I don't know where that came from, you know, I'm still gonna love you. Like, you know, if, if someone has mastered the law of love and they're successful in that, then by golly, we should cling. That's a successful leader. We should hook into that, that frequency of what they've hooked into and mastered. So it doesn't matter if it's love, grace, or money, a job situation, or a spouse. It doesn't matter what it is. Get into the frequencies of what you what you, what you know you want you want to work with you, and get around the company you want to keep in your life to to basically rub off on. Are you with me? And so therefore, I'm saying to this to you. I want you to order. I want you to download this book right now. The Secret of Money Manifestation. Download the download the ebook or order the book. You need it. And in fact, I'll just go ahead and far as saying this. If you guys need to, I would say take, you know, download my course on School of Financial Perception and Mental Economics where I break all that stuff down. I break it down further than what I've just taught you guys. Okay? So either one's great, but get the book definitely. Now, real quick before I close, I'm not going to talk about it at all. So there's no links to post up, so don't be looking for it on the own identity network. Those of you who are in the book of the month program, the book you will get, ready? Applause, please. The book you will get for February will either be between two of my books because we're waiting on the other one to come in. And But I've already got the book already here in my hand, okay? To one of them, one, the other one haven't. But, so one's going to come out in February, one will come out in March. But I don't have that book yet. But when I do, I don't know which one we're going to use for February, okay? But the brand new book that I just got that's not on the website yet is this. Look, ready? The Work of Angels in Our Lives. It's a big, it's a pretty thick book, and this will come to the study guide as well. So, and I'm going to tell you things that other people about angels have not spoken to you before. So, this one hasn't come out yet, but for those in the Book of the Month program, sorry, the connection was a little bit low. So, those of you on the Book of the Month program, either for February, you'll get The Work of Angels in Our Lives and the study guide. The study guide will be free to you, or you'll get the other one, which is called, um, um, Overcoming the Victim Mentality, okay? So I don't have the book yet. So you'll get either one of those. I don't want to confuse you guys, but that's what I'm saying. For those of you not on the, not on the book month program, you are missing out. Because when the study guides, the workbook comes out that are like $10 and $12, you're getting it free of charge, also shipping free if you live in the USA. So I'm just saying that. So, so that's coming out soon. For those of you on the program, you'll get that and the study guide. But those of you who need to order this right now, get it. The Secret of Money Manifestation. The Secret to Money Manifestation. Get it right now, all right? Love you guys. Please, 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 please. Please share this right now. If you're on Instagram, Facebook, Zap It, YouTube, if you're on Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever you're on, please share this. It would mean the world to me if you can share this on your social media. And plus, don't forget to like stuff, like our stuff. The more you like stuff in social media, guess what? The you know the gods of internet, they pay attention to the whole algorithm thing. They like that. So do that. It helps us out. Helps our ministry out. All right? 
And last but not least, buy the book or ebook on The Secret to Money Manifestation. Tune into our podcast on Wednesdays. Join the Book of the Month program on the website. Love you guys. Talk to you all soon.